What is going on everybody? Today I'm going to be covering over the crappie patterns on Lake of the Ozarks during the winter period, coming out of late fall and leading into the pre-spawn and early spring. I'm going to be covering over everything between crappie habits, feeding patterns, where you guys are able to catch them, and some different tips and tricks along the way to help you guys catch more crappie this winter and uh, hopefully have a few more fish fries along the way. Before I get into covering over everything in this video, if you guys are new to the channel, if you'd be so kind as to consider subscribing to In-Depth Angling and dropping a thumbs up down below, it makes me want to keep doing more of these videos and supports the channel. Um, if you guys are a returning subscriber or returning viewer, thank you guys for supporting the channel and helping me continue to make more of these lake breakdowns and helping you guys all learn how to catch more fish and become more successful anglers for a multitude of species on Lake of the Ozarks and other bodies of water around the country. Let's go ahead and dive right into this. So in this shot right here, you guys are looking at uh, the Grand Glaze arm of the lake. That is over there near Osage Beach. The Grand Glaze Bridge is right over here uh, along Highway 54. The Osage arm is coming up here and teeing off with this. So that kind of gives you guys a reference of where we are on the water. PB2 and big state park areas over here. Um, there's a lot fewer docks in this arm, but that's where I'm going to start with this because there's a lot of big shallow areas then a lot of different pockets in the back of these coves where crappie and other game fish are going to be chasing shad during the fall up in the shallows and as we get into colder weather those fish start to move back out into deeper water where it's more stable as the cooler temperatures come in it cools off the shallow areas first and once they get too cold the bait fish leave and so do all the other fish and they start moving back along the channels like these steeper banks over here and they continue to move along and hit the, some of these secondary points, especially along brush piles. And uh, like this is a giant creek channel back over here as well on this bank. And they also congregate around these secondary points, moving back out towards the main lake and into the deeper water where they will kind of hang out for the winter. And if there's areas like this that don't have docks, your best scenario uh, to go and locate consistent fish through these coves is to find structure because crappie are structure nuts. Brush piles, any kind of sunken Christmas trees, um, that could be a tree that fell over in the water. It could be rock piles at times that hold on to. You want to have some sort of structure for those fish to hang around and also the, those structures, especially within brush piles and things, attract smaller bait fish around and it also provides shelter and a point of ambush for those fish to feed. As their metabolism slows down as the water temperature does as they're cold blooded, they continue to move out deeper and they continue to kind of suspend when they are more active throughout the day. Not uncommon at all to start catching fish this time of year along the bluffs, especially if there's any kind of brush piles or sunken trees around along those um, off of main lake points such as this one here, if there's brush piles out along it. Um, there's always fish along wave breakers this time of year. There's especially docks that have points around them or brush piles around them uh, make for great fishing locations with access to deep water nearby. I want to take you guys over here across the channel from where I just was. Condo docks that are scattered along in here where crappie can suspend underneath that has access to deep water nearby. As barometric pressure and cold fronts affect these fish, they don't really move out of the deep water too much this time of year. They kind of suspend over areas where there's structure and access to deep water nearby. If they're active during the day, you have a warmer day. Let's say the water uh, is still in the 40s or 30s but the air temperature gets up to 60 or 70. Water temperature on the surface will start to get a little bit warmer. Those rocks along the points and stuff will start to heat up the water just a few degrees. And even the foam underneath the docks starts to heat up as it retains some of that heat from the sun. And those fish will start to suspend upwards in the water column and become a little bit more active. And so dock shooting along these docks along here can be very productive during certain times. Other times, vertically jigging um, around brush piles and things over the points is the best way to go and fish can kind of suspend over the top of any kind of structure this time of year as long as they are close to a deep water access or can go down quickly because they don't really venture up into the shallows where the water is more turbulent in temperature and also fewer bait fish are in the area. All the bait fish have moved back out into the creek channels along the points and into the main coves where there's some deeper water. I'm still in the Grand Glaze arm. I've come up here closer towards McCubbin's point. I'll zoom out real quick so you guys can see more where I'm at. In this area here 
Missouri Department of Conservation has dropped several fish attractors, brush piles over the years to give crappie structure to live in and also to help fishermen locate some fish. There's a website that has all these brush piles labeled out with GPS markers. Like if I click on one of these, it'll tell me the GPS coordinates of it. And it does that with all of them here. And that is on MDC's website. Uh, if you look up Lake of the Ozarks and the annual prospects, you should just scroll down through there and there will be a link with all the brush piles and stuff on it. The ones that I would be focusing on this time of year are the ones that have deep water access nearby, where there's deeper water or quick access to deeper water. So it could be up on a flat on the main channel, as long as there's quick access to an old creek bed or something nearby to where those fish can make a quick escape once the weather gets bad and they start pushing off into deeper water. So as an example of a few of these ones that I would be checking out would be any of these ones along this point over here or along this creek channel. There's other spots as well on the back of these coves where there's channel swings that come in close to the bank where those fish will sit there and they'll winter up and they'll be fished there all winter long at different times. Uh, just on the inside of points is always good and so it doesn't have to be directly on the main channel but it needs to be close to where they have an access either to an old creek channel and a bigger cove or towards the main channel. I've said this in all my other breakdowns of the lake. It fishes differently based on what section you're in. Like you can see just as a zoomed out area here, down here by the dam, there's a lot more white indicating deeper water. Up here, the further up you go on the Osage, it becomes more light blue and into dark blue as you go up and that indicates shallower areas. And you can see just how much different the channels are in depth. Like if I go down here towards the lower end of the Osage arm, towards the dam, which is gonna be the deepest part of any reservoir, generally speaking, it's in the 100 foot range out here in the main old river channel. Now, if I go up here, back up here towards the glaze arm, it is actually significantly shallow where the main channel and the old river channel is sitting around in about 16 feet of water over here in this section. And it's around slowly and slowly tapering off to where it starts getting into the mid 20s and mid 30s. And the further and further down you go, the deeper it gets. And what, the part that makes this more significant and why they fish different is that shallow water cools off faster, meaning that this area up here on these upper river arms of the lake are going to be in a winter fishing mode faster than the ones down here by the dam. There can be entire weeks that go by down here at the dam where the fish are more of in a fall pattern yet, or a late fall pattern, and then up here in the upper river arms, they could be on full into like an early winter pattern where they're starting to move further back out. As you come over here to the middle of the lake, it's kind of a mix of things. You have Lynn Creek Cove, which is largest basically cove on the lake. It's one of the bigger ones. It kind of acts almost as its own river arm as long as it is. It gets to be about 60, 65 feet over here about the mouth of it. And that joins up right about where the Osage and the Big Niangua come together. So there's a lot of different fish that kind of migrate through that area throughout the year. And the cove is very active with different crappie and other game fish as well. A lot of brush piles in here. And the further up you go, especially along some of these steeper banks, like over here where there's a lot more black and the lines are closer together, that indicates a steeper drop off or an old creek channel being closer towards there. And those areas are the ones where in the wintertime you're going to be wanting to check out and try to catch more of these fish. You don't want to be in areas as much as where the lines are very tapered slowly and shallow. So like I would not bother coming back to the back of a cove like this where it's like 10 feet of water and the lines are kind of more tapered indicating a shallow more gradual slope as opposed to something that's more sharp and has access to deep water and structure that is out there. A few of the different baits I like to use during the winter time include different variations of crappie jigs and minnows. Um, my favorite color to use on Lake of the Ozarks is some variation of chartreuse. It could be something like this which is like a barley garland style of crappie jig or it could be something that is more of a, like a tube style and you can fish this either vertically um, right over the top of fresh piles or by dock shooting and trying to catch some of those fish that are higher suspended up into the water column and are more active and a lot of times those fish will actually take your bait on the fall. In the winter time as fish's metabolism and crappie's metabolism start to become slower you want to fish these baits slower and especially very steady along the tops of those brush piles. A lot of times bass anglers will accidentally catch bigger crappie in the lake uh, fishing around brush piles or points with jerk baits 
a lot of shad this time of year is going to be their main forage. Still going to be a big staple in their diet, especially on these reservoirs. But the bigger fish, especially like those crappie that are in like the 12 to 15 inch range, they're going to be taking more and more of these jerk baits this time of year as shad are starting to die off as the cooler water happens as well. Um, they become very easy targets for them. And if you pop one of these right in front of a school of hungry crappie that are bigger around a brush pile, they'll come out and absolutely destroy this thing. And uh, you can catch some of the biggest crappie of the year on these baits. Um, this is a six cents provoke. It's one I like to use and does a pretty good job. I've caught crappie on it. I've caught bass and various species, all kinds of stuff out of the lake with it. Everything in this lake eats shad. So if you're in a clear water situation, you can get by with more of like a white or a silver kind of bait that imitates a shad. Color, I mean, these kind of things. I love these bobby garlands for their long tail and vertical jigging. It just kind of moves all over the place without you having to move it too much yourself and jig it. It gives action to a slow and steady reel. But hands down, chartreuse is definitely my favorite go-to to start off with if you're in doubt of what color to be using. Try something with some chartreuse. It doesn't have to be straight chartreuse. It could be something with a mix. But I would start there and then you can venture out into maybe some of these more natural colors if you have some cleaner water. Up here on the big Niangua arm of the lake near Larry Gale. A lot of docks up here, a lot more than what the Grand Glaze Arm has. This is closer towards Camdenton. Isolated docks out here along the bluffs. So, I mean, this is a very steep point over here and access to deep water right away and the main channel. Those kind of docks are going to be the ones I would target this time of year for winter crappie that are suspending up there. You can catch them by dock shooting. If you can find some brush piles like in these little pockets off these cliffs, over here next to the deep water, trees that fall in off the cliff, those are going to be hot spots for crappie and they're going to be very, very productive if you can locate them. So for example, let's say this dock out here, more of the main point over here where the lines are a little bit steeper, has got a big school of crappie on it. This dock right here next to it and these smaller ones here may not have any fish under them at all. And there might be 40 or 50 crappie underneath this one. So they kind of really pile themselves up this time of year and really group up over those deeper structures and kind of feed together in packs almost like a, a big school. Yeah, but they're not really out actively hunting. They're just kind of like structured oriented and opportunistically feed as bait fish come by. They're not really out chasing like they were during the fall period. And lastly, I'll take you guys back down over here towards the dam. I'm taking you guys in here to Duckhead Cove over here. A lot of big docks in here, there's some condos, and then across the way there's a few different secondary points, and this cove is fairly deep because it's close to the dam, and it's also very long, so there's a lot of structure that's in here, and it's, these fish will winter even towards the back of this cove, almost because it's still, you know, 25, 26 feet deep out here in the middle, and there's some condo docks back in here, and locating the brush piles in this cove, well, after you can do that, you'll catch the fish in there. They're all deeper, especially if they're longer coves. Those fish will winter even like half to two-thirds of the way back in these coves. They have no problem sitting around in 15, 20 feet of water, which you have I mean, all the way back here, almost to the very back of this cove. So you can really find these fish anywhere along in these areas. Um, the river arms, you especially find more of the fish along the main channel itself. And along towards the deeper sections of the lake, you can find them further up into the coves. They still have the white markings in here, which is like 60 feet or more um, in most of these coves, and they're going halfway back. These ones, this big cove over here on the north shore, can hold fish pretty much all the way at the end of it. As you can see, it's still 20 feet deep here, 17 feet deep, until it finally comes to the back of the shallow area. So really, you can find fish on any of these docks over here, especially along the steeper bank. This one, these lines are a little bit further out for me for me to want to go over and fish, but this is a little bit more congested and a little bit sharper break close to a big channel. So those are good areas to be checking out. So without further ado, I'm going to wrap this up here. If you guys have any questions or comments for me, uh, drop a comment down below. Drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Let me know you guys like this, and I'll keep making more of them. Subscribe so you don't miss more content like this, more breakdowns of the lake for other species covering bass, walleye, uh, future ones on catfish and crappie, of course. Appreciate you guys' support and your guys' time for watching this. Hopefully you guys get out there and this helps you catch a few more fish this winter and you guys get to go catch more and bigger crappie on Lake of the Ozarks. I'll catch you out there. See you next time. Have a good day.